In this example, we're asked to find a set A, which makes this function bijective. So let's talk a little bit about what it means for a function to be bijective first. One of my favorite ways to represent a function, uh, I really like geometry. I think most of you guys know that at this point. I love geometry. So I like to envision a function as a correspondence between two sets, like two blobs like this, where in this case, our domain set A, so this is our domain, we'll call it A, is on the left. It doesn't have to be on the left, but just for this picture, it's on the left. And on the right-hand side, uh, this set is the codomain, which we're told for this, for this example is the natural numbers, N. I usually make my natural number bold right there, a little different than that symbol. But this is the codomain. All right, and the function itself, what does it do? Well, it takes all the points in the domain and it assigns to them a point in the codomain. All right, and it does this for every input to be a function, to be a function for every input, it must take every point in the domain to exactly one point in the codomain. All right, now what does it mean for a function to be bijective? Well, bijective means that this point over here in the codomain so this point in the codomain has only one arrow coming into it. So there's only one uh, point from the domain that corresponds to that point in the codomain. Not only that, I said it has only one arrow coming into it, but it actually has exactly one arrow coming into it. So remember that a bijective function, bijective is equal to two things actually. That's why it's called bijective, right? It's equal to injective. Injective says that if the point in the codomain has an arrow coming in, then it has only one arrow coming in, right? And it's also surjective. And the surjective tells us that every point in the codomain, so say this one, for example, every point in the codomain has at least one arrow coming in, but when you take both of these together, it means that every point over there has exactly one arrow coming in, right? And so bijective uh, is said in calculus terms to mean uh, one to one, those are ones, one to one, and onto. So a bijective function is both one to one and onto in calculus notation. All right, well, that's just a, a brief review of what it means for a function to be bijective. Let's now try to find this set, right? So we want, and by the way, in this notation, the x maps to x squared in our, if we wanted to write this in calculus notation, this would be written as f of x equals x squared. That would be the formula for the correspondence. And remember the correspondence is the arrows of this picture right here. Okay, so what do we need? Well, we are told that the codomain, so we're told that our codomain is the natural numbers, right? So we need to find a set a, so this is our codomain, I'll call it B, just because it usually functions map from A to B. So B equals to the natural numbers. We need to know what would A have to be in order for this function to be a bijection, so to be bijective. So we want F of X, so this is the formula. We're given the formula and we have to determine this set to make this bijective. So bijective, question mark. Well, let's think about what happens. So let's just pick some, some of our favorite number sets. What if A is equal to the natural numbers also, right? Well, if A is equal to the natural numbers, remember the natural numbers are the set of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. right? Um, and if we then square these, so then what would F of A look like if this was the case, right? So F of N. So this is the image of our function. The image space is, is when you apply f to all of the elements. What do we get back? Well, we get back 0 squared, 1 squared. You have to apply the formula now, right? 2 squared, 3 squared, etc. But this is the set 0, 1, 4, 9, etc. So this is injective because for every output over here, there's only one input from our natural numbers that gave us this. So this choice is injective but it is not surjective. Why is it not surjective? Well, because two is not here, right? Three is not here, and then as you go along, these gaps get even bigger, right? So there are, all you need to see is one missing point from the codomain to know that it's not surjective. So this is not a surjective function. So, all right, well, what else could we do? We need to choose something that's going to give us back the natural numbers as the codomain. So remember, we know that the codomain has to be this, right? So we need our f of a to actually equal the set 0, 1, 2, 3, 
4, etc. The natural numbers, right? And what we can do then is try to reverse everything, right? So notice that when we took the function and applied it to the entire domain, which up here we had we had guessed might be this, um, what did we do? Well, we element by element we squared this whole thing, right? So what does that tell us? Well, if we go down to this ex this guess or this example, what's it going to have to be? Well, if we want to get this back. Um, from the squaring function, then we need to take the square root. We need to do the inverse operation of the square, right? So we end up getting square root 0, square root 1, square root 2, square root 3, square root of 4, which of course is 2, right? But I, I've written this all out in terms of square roots so far, etc. But now we could write this as the set 0, 1, square root 2, square root 3, 2, etc. Right, and so this is this is one answer um, that will make our function bijective because it's still injective, it's still injective, right? But we fixed the problem with the surjective, and so now we fixed our surjective problem with our original guess, and so this answer will work, right? This will make our function uh, bijective. Now, is it the only answer? This was the the second part of the question. So, are there other answers. And think about this for a moment while I write. You can probably guess that there are, right? Because we know, again, from calculus or previous courses, that when you square a number, the output is always positive, right? So another, the answer here is yes, right? And another answer, we'll call this a prime, for example, could just be all the negatives. So we could have all the same numbers but negative, right? So negative zero, which is not, that doesn't make any sense, right? We can take the negative of the rest of them though. Uh, zero, negative one, negative root two, negative root three, etc. All right, that's an acceptable answer. But there's also no reason that we can't mix up pluses and minuses, right? So we could do like an A double prime. I'm just giving these primes just so we know that it doesn't mean anything uh, other than that it's different than the previous one. But we could do zero, one, negative root 2, root 3, negative 2, root 5, etc. We could have the plus and minus signs alternate back and forth as you go through uh, this progression. All right, and actually you can just have any random assignment of a plus or a minus as you go through and it would still work. All right, and that will still be injective and surjective.